Hey everyone, this video we're going to talk about wood moisture meters and why they are very important if you want to burn efficiently and get as much heat as you possibly can out of every piece of wood. So stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back to Up North with an Ibergs. Ed here, as you can see, I am down here in my wood storage area, just outside of my wood boiler right here. I run a, a gasification unit, it's a central boiler, uh, HDX 760. It's the second year that I've used it. And one thing I've learned, I've had a traditional one before. One thing I learned is you gotta have dry wood. And so in this video, we are gonna talk about moisture meters and making sure that the wood is ready to be burned uh, the most efficient way possible. And this certainly comes in handy. I've got about five of these. We're gonna go down to my uh, workshop and we're gonna start testing some of those to see what kind of readings we get. And I'll give you my uh, pros and cons to, to each of them. Uh, but it's very, very important to have uh, extremely dry wood, especially for these units. Today it's about 30 degrees. I've got no smoke coming out. And I currently have 187 degrees showing on the wood boiler down here. So you can see it's very, very important to have extremely dry wood and split wood. You can see I've got some backup uh, IBC totes as well. So stick around, let's head down to the workshop and let's start looking at some of these and seeing uh, which one you may or may not, not like. So uh, let's head down. Now we're down in my shop area, and this particular area in my barn is uh, pretty much set up for chainsaw sharpening. And uh, I typically put ones that need to be sharpened over here and sharpen them on my uh, uh, workbench. And then when they're done, they're, they're ready to go over here on this table as well. So that's typically how I, I do it down here. And I thought this would be a good place to show the moisture meters. Uh, that way we can get some pretty decent readings. Uh, as you can see, I've got five of them here. Four of these, these four are the pin type. And then this last one over here is pinless. So we're going to just uh, compare these uh, different meters that I have. And I did, real quick, I picked up some wood. I know this wood is, uh, uh, I can tell, almost tell you exactly what the percentage of uh, moisture is in there. In fact, uh, you know, this is the driest, next driest, and then this one is the next one after that. And this one here still has snow on it. I picked that one up on the way down here from my wood yard. So uh, we know which, uh, that that's gonna be pretty, pretty uh, high in the moisture content. So like I said, I've got five. I've used this one the most, I just got this one. And this one actually in full disclosure was sent to me and I didn't have to pay for it. It was from uh, a company called uh, Top, Top Tees, Top Tees, I think I'm saying that right. It's a pin tight moisture meter, I've never used it. Today's the first day that I'm gonna compare it to the other ones that I do use. The first one I bought was this little steel uh, I think I bought this, geez, it's got to be seven, eight years ago. Still pretty, it looks still pretty new because uh, I don't use it that often. This is the one that I've really fallen in love with. And then I decided this year to get this R&D pinless one just to see how that works as well. Um, and this one was sent to me free. Actually, it wasn't sent to me. I think I bought... I must have bought uh, a chainsaw or this came with a central boiler. I'm not sure, but I didn't pay for this. It came, it was free. And But as you can see, it is identical to the steel. I mean, it, it's obviously made by the same manufacturer. Uh, and these, they're made in China. I think all these are probably made in, made in China. I don't think any of these are, are US uh, made, unfortunately. If you know of a US made one, uh, put it down in the comments because I would be curious and I'd like to pick one up. Uh, but in any event, like I said, this one was sent to me and I thought, okay, well, this might be a good opportunity to kind of compare pin and pinless 
meters. So uh, let's go ahead and, and start testing some of this wood. Okay, so hopefully you can see this uh, piece of wood pretty well and you can see the, the meters as well. I'll let you know what the readings are and try and hold them up to the camera as well. But typically, typically when you're testing a piece of wood, you want to, you know, if it's, if it's freshly split, you can uh, certainly start in the middle and work your way out to see the whole piece of wood on whether or not it's, uh, it's ready to be burned. Uh, as a rule of thumb, anything less than 20% is considered dry. Anything more than that needs uh, more seasoning. Always split wood will dry quicker and burn more efficiently than unsplit wood. And that's, that's just a fact. It'll dry quicker as well too because you have more of this surface area uh, to be able to dry quicker as well. So uh, it's more efficient. I know a lot of folks that have the traditional, I had the traditional boiler as well. Uh, they could just cut a log and throw it in and it works great. It definitely smokes more and with smoke you get uh, energy loss as, loss as well. So uh, if you have the time, then uh, certainly split it and I have always split my wood and uh, especially now that I have a gasification unit as well. So so now let's move to this uh, Tavool and this is the one that I mentioned uh, that I like and I have been using quite often. Uh, let's see if you can, if I can get that in there so that you can see it, the display. And start in the middle again. Okay, this one says 13, 13, 12.9, so 13 pretty much all across. And uh, that's to be expected. That's what I think this should be, closer to uh, 13. Okay, uh, I decided to use and compare these two. These are uh, kind of the latest technology that's out there. This is the pinless, the R&D, with a sensor on the back. Uh, let me turn that on so you can see that. And then the pinned top, top tees, I think I'm saying that correctly. This is the one that was sent to me to try out as well. These two have the two big screens, let's see. Make sure you can see those uh, that I like as well. And the reason why you'd wanna even consider a moisture meter is just to take the guesswork out of it. Sure, if you're a year or two ahead with your, with your wood, you know it's gonna be dry if you split it and you had it covered and that kind of thing. But this this does help and give you another data point to, to know if your wood is ready to be burned. So um, this Tavool I've had for a long time, I don't think it's as accurate anymore compared to the other ones. It's been beat up and you can't even get it. I looked for it and I can't even find it online anymore. So uh, I think I'm gonna retire that one. And I think I'm gonna uh, consider just using these two. So let's uh, let's see how similar they are as far as their reading. So I, I know this wood is dry. This is the wood that we're using right now down at the wood boiler and it gives us very little smoke. I get very high combustion percentages in the reaction chamber. So I know that this is a really, really dry wood or relatively dry wood. It's under 20 for sure. So let's uh, take take a look at the center and then also an edge. So for this one, it has a sensor on the back and you just hold it up there and press it on there. So this one right in the center is right about 13%. And the top tees with the pins, let me make sure I get the same spot is showing a little bit more, about 14%. Uh, so that's within the range. I know you might be able to calibrate these and maybe get them a little bit closer, but uh, for the most part, I feel comfortable that this is around 13%. Now the edge here is showing about 16.1 on the pinless and on the pin top tees is 14.7. So once again, let's make sure I get pretty close to the same spot. It's showing about 16.8. And this one is showing about 15.4. 
So it's within the range, and like I said, uh, you know, this is this is dry wood and it's ready to go. Um, so let's let's go to the other extreme and grab a piece that is is very wet. In fact, <laughs> this one was on. Uh, had some snow on it. I, I drove by the wood yard and picked this up. I know it's uh, it's pretty wet. So let's, once again, let's do the center and then we'll do a, a side. So this is the pinless. Let's try and get a place that doesn't have a lot of moisture showing. All right, let me move it over here. Try and get a flat surface. 37. And then with the pinned, 33. So that's a pretty big difference. 4%. Let's look over on the side here. 37, close to 37. And then with the pinned. Make sure I get a good solid contact. Showing 26. Uh, that could be in part because this certainly has a much bigger uh, surface area to try and collect data and these of course just have the two pins so let's try it on this side see what we get it's 40 percent and let's see if i can get a decent yeah this one is significantly showing significantly less like around 26 percent and i don't know why it is that far off. So I'm gonna to go to a tiebreaker here and try my trusty steel and see what it says here. Twenty six. So it's uh it's certainly closer to this uh this uh pinned one. Maybe it's because it's pinned as well. I'm gonna see if I can get a better Okay, so now I'm getting 31. Thirty-two. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. So, uh, all within, I think, an acceptable range. This is still above 20%, so it's not ready to burn, obviously. And I think there are some differences in the readings with these, uh, just the way that the technology works on these. I, I think there are some uh, some limiting uh, differences with them. So I'll probably just consider using both of these uh, as well. Like I said, I, I really like the bigger screens. Uh, for both of these. The other thing is, is uh, really with a moisture meter, like I mentioned before, is just you want to make sure that you're kind of taking the guesswork out of it and making sure that it's under 20%. And that's really the only reason to, to have these uh, as well. So I hope this was a little bit helpful. Uh, like I said, these readings are not perfectly the same, uh, but I think they're close enough and within the range to know whether or not you're ready to burn this wood or not and certainly you aren't. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave them below. And uh, once again, this is Ed with Up North with the Nybergs, and I really appreciate you watching the video and commenting. Thank you very much.